Right, eh? Welcome back to the channel. Been a bit of a break. It's been good. Family time, all the Christmas activities and whatnot. Bit of a holiday. Anyway, back in the bush. Today's just a morning hunt. It's basically get some K's on my legs. So I'm just in a flogged out spot along the Wellington. And uh, yeah, come along, we'll see what we can find. Never been in here before, so just gonna go in blind and see if I can find something. I'm not really after anything in particular. Just uh, good to get out for a walk. Had good rain yesterday, probably had over an inch of rain up here yesterday, so any tracks I find should be nice and fresh. Be good to try and follow some up and do a bit of walking them up. Should be some glassing up a bit higher. But it does get lombonged a fair bit, so we'll see what I can find on the scrubby side. Anyway, thanks for joining me again and being patient. Yeah, let's see what this year brings. Should be a good one. proper fresh dingo track. It's been here this morning. <clears throat> right, I've just slipped up this ridge. I'll show you on the map where, I, where I've come up. And the uh, reason why I did that is ridges just allow you to get into, get a long way in, easy. Um, there's usually pads on them. They're usually made yeah, a little bit more open. If you can pick one with a nice grade, you can actually move through a lot of country really quickly. Now I could have come straight up a big steep face here, and by the time I got to this height, I'd be buggered. So, I've got to use the use the land to your advantage. <clears throat> yeah, there's a heap of cloud coming in. It's raining, so most of my glassing's going to be short range from now on. So I'm really hoping just to cut some fresh marks. Well, I'm not real confident of getting enough content for a video in this hunt. So what I'm going to do is, it's going to bombard you with tips along the way. Hopefully I run into deer. I've started to see a little bit of old sign, but nothing exciting. So, this probably won't be a hunting video. With heaps of deer, live deer, dead deer, fresh sign even. This is going to be me walking along, thinking, right, what do people want to know? If you're a beginner, intermediate, whatever, if you're advanced, you don't need my help. But anyway, tip number one, when you're contouring around a steep face, carry your firearm on the low side. This is generally, if you slip, you're going to land that way, naturally. You don't want to land on your scope. So, I'm contouring around. High side's on my right, so I'm carrying the firearm on with my left hand. Tip number two. Just come around this face. Around, oh, around a little bit of the 
you know, couldn't see much, couldn't see far. And you can't see around the corner and you know there's sort of a gully head or a nice face coming up. Pull up before you go around. Sit, listen. You can't see, so just use your ears. Give it a little bit of time. Sometimes you'll have deer just around the corner from you and you hear them break a stick or they might stomp a foot at you or something. So don't be in a rush to get around there. Pull up for a little bit. Sneak around once you've given it a bit of time. And then when you get in there and you can see, pull up. Glass, listen, smell. I smelt a deer back here. I can't see much. But then tip number three. So you've got yourself into a good spot. There should be deer there. You think there should be deer there. There's nothing there. Don't race off to the next spot. Sit. Develop the situation. Let it. Give it time. These things don't move fast. One could just pop out through that little clearing there. Or come across the face. Or come around from the other side. They've got no idea on you. If you're in a good spot. And the conditions are right. Give it time. Develop it. Yeah, right. I'm proper socked in here, I can only really shoot 100, 150 yards. Perfect stalking conditions, nice and quiet. Wind's consistent. I just need a set of marks and then we game on. When you're on the hunt, try your hardest to stay on a deer pad. The reason for that is it's usually a lot quieter underfoot because there's not as much debris in that sticks. And also deer travel on deer pads. So if you're on a deer pad, chances are you can run into a deer on a deer pad. Not to say you have to be on a deer pad to see a deer, but and that they always use deer, deer pads. You get my drift. If you can be on one, it's a good chance you'll pick up a mark. What I've just done, I've cut around the base of this little bluff, which is a great spot to find beds and a path along the underneath side of the rocks. Bang, I've got a fresh sign. Now, keep the wind right, keep an eye on the tracks, keep my eyes up very little visibility here, binoculars are a waste of time. If I'm going to shoot this thing it's more than likely going to be on the run or just as it's hiding behind a tree or something waiting for me. Don't think it knows I'm here yet. The wind swelled on me and I heard one stick break. It's only about 50 yards away. Got running marks now, so I could give up, but experience has taught me these sorts of conditions where you basically can track them for as long as you want to. She'll give me another chance, I'm pretty sure it's a hind, could be a young stag. Just because they know they're following, or they know you're there and they've run off, so you yeah, don't tend to run into the next county or run to somewhere where they're comfortable and they might just wait for you and if you're sneaky enough when they're sitting there waiting for you they might just give you a little honk they might just give you a little look at them pop, got them 
So, tip number five. Just because you put a deer up doesn't mean you have to give up on it. That socked in, I may as well stay on marks that, are, that I know are fresh. Then cutting around trying to find another deer. So I've given up on that hind. Just following her marks, but my air is just constantly up my butt. So stalking like that, you've got to have the wind right. So what I've done is she sort of started angling down, I angled back up, got underneath his bluff again. So there's every chance I could run into her, maybe trying to push up out of this system. Once I get into one of these big gullies here, she might just show me herself. Or... But I've just started running a bit more old sign, which is encouraging. So might just find another deer. Just come across his face and jumped out of his skin. <laughs> Little dragon. Pretty slow. Yeah, right, tip six. I'm heading back to the car. Don't just drop your yard and go back to camp or back to your car or whatever especially if you haven't had a good day because these things sometimes just jump out of nowhere where you least expect them and you might just turn your day around not far from your ute or in that scrubby gully you just planned on smashing through so that's what I'm doing right now I'm just taking a little bit of a break and a side cut back around you bit lower than where I was when I came through the tops but there's no sign down here but it's nothing to say there won't be a little yearling tucked up in one of these gullies and I'll be happy to take it so give the lower boots a plug I got the elite evos on today I got drowned in this rain and walking through these long grass and scrub I've only just got wet socks now and that's purely because the water's running down my leg into the top of my sock not because the boots let me down what I will tell you is with good quality boots when they get wet inside and out they still hold their shape they still give the support yep they get heavy but you still got all the benefits of a quality boot cheap boots get wet inside and out yeah you end up with blisters and tripping over and it's just no good so these boots have performed today in some of the, you know, some hard going, pretty steep, slippery, and uh, and they've been wet. So on a on a day like today, this is where you, you know, you got good boots on. My feet aren't sore; they're not hot. You know, they're not rubbing. Yeah. Anyway, you do have to build up your feet in this sort of country like your first hunt a few hunts for the year you will get sore feet but with good boots on you shouldn't get any blisters you should just build up those calluses and build up those spots on your feet that need to be a bit tougher if you haven't been wearing boots much all right let's uh sneak around here it's no good up here i'll drop down on the river flats and just poke around maybe try and find a cast antler or something so another tip First time into this spot, pay attention to what you find. Seems pretty basic, but you really need to hunt a spot a few times before you can really expect to be successful all the time. And what I mean by successful is seeing the deer, physically seeing the deer, getting amongst them. So I didn't see any deer this trip. I did get amongst them though, like they were there. I wasn't far off them, but what I've realised with this spot is it's basically at this time of year there's not much point wasting any time in the first half of this mountain. The deer sign is from halfway and higher. So 
So next time I would be down the bottom an hour before daylight. I'd be hiking up this ridge in the headlamp, getting up high at the crack of daylight rather than leaving down there. I left down there about half an hour or so after daylight, so but when you've got a new spot, you've got to you gotta learn it first. You gotta learn the deer, learn the, the way the wind works. And I also learnt when I walk through here and I look back, I'd be much better off walking in the total opposite direction because I've got a lot better views of different gullies and actually where the deer sign was I could see it better looking back but I'd already walked through there so next time I'll hike up a different ridge and come in from the opposite direction so these are all things you learn you know and the more you go to a certain spot the more you'll learn and the more successful you'll be Alright oh, no. nearly back to the ute so, to all the subscribers, thanks for hanging with me. And uh, anyone that's just jumping on board, uh, sign up, that'd be good. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. And um, yeah, hopefully we can get out there and do some good hunting this year. Pretty confident of uh, being able to get out a fair bit, which will be good. Now, I'm still in the process of trying to set up a business. Um, public liability has proven to be an issue, but I'm nearly there. So if you're looking for that mentor or that guided hunt, someone to learn from, trying to get it set up for you. Um, once I do, I'll post up that it's available and we can start booking some dates. But until it's all legal and legit, I'm not, I'm not, uh, not jumping into it. Not cutting any corners. And uh, hopefully that all adds up to a better experience for you guys um, when it does happen. So, you know, cheers. Thank you.